Well, here's another mamba story. Mamba stories are very interesting, but sometimes they don't have the outcome you would like. These are true tales of my African adventures. May this inspire you, deter you, caution you, and above all, entertain you. This is a very sad one, actually. So, what you should know, first of all, is that if a mamba bites you, and you're in a remote location, it's roughly equal to a death sentence. So we owned a farm where there were many mambas. The whole district was full of mambas. They lived and thrived and bred in the hills and the rocky clusters, in the bushy long grass and in the trees. It was wonderful, a wonderful breeding ground for mambas. Um, we had a neighbor called Hannes, very nice chap, and he was just over the ridge from us. It was a high ridge, a north-facing ridge. We named our farm after it. We called it North Ridge, and this ridge was packed with mambas and other snakes and leopards and a host of creatures. It was an amazing ridge. Well, mambas are a very, very interesting snake. They fast. Uh, they're huge. They can grow over four meters long, which is 12, 14 feet, and, uh, and they pack a punch. Now, having a very thin and sensitive neck, they don't want to hold on to their prey, so they'll strike out, grab something. It could be a small mongoose, it could be a rabbit, it could be a rat, and if they hold on to it, that animal could turn around and deliver a fatal bite to the mamba's sensitive neck. So what they do is they go and develop a venom over a long period of thousands and thousands and thousands of years which works so quickly that when the mamba bites its prey that animal will die very quickly. So the mamba doesn't have to send out a search party to go and find its food. The food will just be somewhere nearby because nothing lives long after a mamba bite. And that is a very, uh, a very good and effective way of securing your prey. So, uh, and it's devastating. The mamba bite is, it's like getting punched and immediately uh, there are symptoms. Uh, I should know, I've uh, been bitten by a mamba. In fact, I died briefly after being bitten by a mamba. I was on this uh, surgery, I was in the surgery lying flat on my back with doctors and nurses fiddling with me because they looked like I wasn't, they thought I wasn't going to make it and it looked like I had stopped breathing, which indeed I had. So there I was in another part of the room staring down at these doctors, uh, nurses. In fact the, the doctor was an intern, the one who was really trying to treat me and he said to me, uh, uh, we said to his staff, uh, how is it that on one of my first nights on duty I should get a mamba bite and you don't even have mambas in this district. Uh, I'd been bitten whilst doing an exhibition. Anyway, it didn't feel odd leaving my body. There I was looking at this scene from a distance and quite frankly um, I felt quite calm and uh, I could see and hear everything exquisitely with no eyes and no ears. And I wanted to say to them, please don't get fussed about this because I'll be fine. I'll start breathing again shortly. How I knew that, I don't know. But I did start breathing again uh, very shortly and then I was back in my body. Um, so that's what happened on that particular day. I've watched somebody die from a mamba bite, something which you don't want to ever see. I've watched people develop terrible symptoms from snake bites, including myself, uh, family member on one occasion, and employees. Uh, it's, it's not uh, something you wish to actually get involved in, to see uh, something to be avoided. So, the story goes back to our farm, Northridge, in the district we were living. And uh, Hannes and his wife, on a weekend day, had a visitor, a lady. 
and they had lunch together and chatted the afternoon away until she had to leave uh, because she lived quite far from the farm. So what she did was she collected her bag and her belongings and Hannes's wife offered to walk her to her vehicle. Now the vehicle was about 300 feet from the house and it was across a beautiful lush lawn they kept that lawn uh, beautifully manicured uh, during the summer months and they had a tap with a big grey hose pipe uh, which was usually rolled up in the uh, rockery in the middle of their lawn and they walked in this direction to go to the vehicle. So what happened is um, they walked chatting happily and as they passed the rockery the lady, Hannes' wife, stepped onto the hosepipe. Except it wasn't a hosepipe. It was a huge black mamba which was lying on the lawn with its body curved back towards the rockery where its head was engaged in peeping around in the rocks and the bush looking for food. As she stood on it, it spun round and delivered a massive bite into her lower leg. Well, the panic was all over her face and she ran back to Hannes for help and uh, they, uh, he and this visitor helped her into their vehicle and he got in the vehicle and sped off. Now, they had to go to the first and nearest town which was about 20 minutes drive away and the doctor there said he had no means of helping her not a mamba bite and he said they should go immediately to the next town which was called Nailstrom. Nailstrom was named after the Nile River because when early pioneers moved through the country they thought they had reached the Nile and so they called the place Nails Rafir which means the Nile River. Anyway, they were heading to um, Nailstrom where there would be some help for her. But they never got there. She died.